Field Sports, and welcome to Original Joe's in downtown San Jose at 301 South 1st Street. Michael Spiro with you, alongside San Jose State Interim Head Coach Kent Bayer. And Coach, congratulations on being named San Jose State's Interim Head Coach. I'm not sure it's congratulations or not. It, you know, sometimes you do these things and you want to, sometimes you don't. But it's a, it's a great opportunity for the team and the rest of the coaching staff. Well, now it's not your first time in this role. You're also the interim head coach at Notre Dame in 2004 when the team got set for the end cycle. So you've done this before. I've done it before. A little different situation, you know, like when was when Coach Longham got let go and nobody had a job. And you know, this was a little bit different. You know, we're not quite sure what the transition is going to be like with this move, but uh, you know, we're excited about playing the game and playing good football team. How did it go down? How did athletics director Gene Blaymeyer approach you and uh, have the conversation? Well, you know, there was a lot of transition going on. Obviously, the last 72, 72 hours have been a little tough, but uh, Gene and I talked yesterday, uh, Tuesday morning, very early, uh, and then we had a brief discussion later, and then about 3.30, he came in the office and closed the door, and we sat down and talked about it and asked if I'd do it, and, and so I said yes. And we, we, we just needed something to, uh, to move forward. We, we need some answers, so... We got those answers and we moved forward. Well, of course, you're also the defensive coordinator here at San Jose State. So, how does this change your personal preparation for the upcoming bowl game? Well, it doesn't change a lot. I mean, you know, there's a lot of um, scheduling that we got to deal with that, that Mike would have done, obviously, and uh, you know, the, you know, the travel is obviously a huge deal because we're taking the entire team and, and just the scheduling of the hotel and the, the different events that's going on. We're trying to finalize all that, uh, but at the same time, we're, we're working on preparation and trying to game plan for Bowling Green. We worked all day today. Uh, we worked, we worked a few hours prior to this. Uh, so we, we got a little more work to do, but the, you know, it's just a, a, few, a few more hours involved with this. You're listening to the San Jose State Coaches Show from Learfield Sports. Michael Spear with you alongside San Jose State Interim Head Coach Kent Bayer. Tonight on the program, we'll talk about the recent San Jose State coaching transition. We'll get to know Coach Bayer a little bit more. And uh, we'll also be joined a little bit later in the show by San Jose State Assistant Athletics Director for Ticket Operations, Darren Coelho. We'll wrap up this evening's show with a preview of the upcoming Military Bowl featuring the number 24 San Jose State Spartans and Bowling Green. So, Coach, let's talk about this uh, this uh, transition here. Coach Mack, of course, uh, heading to Colorado. You learned this earlier in the week on Monday. His name had been tossed around uh, quite a bit in, uh, in relation to recent openings around the country. Did the Colorado hiring... Uh, surprise you at all? No. You know, when you go through your like, Haunt, party yeah, three or three or now ready. Haunt, party yeah, three. It, it, it does surprise me. It's part of the business. Uh, you know, you, you expect that. Uh, you know, when, you know, there's a bunch of job openings, and uh, you know, I know there was a bunch of people that, talk, that called him and wanted to talk to him, and uh, I think this is uh, the one that really caught his eye, and I think they, well, I know they, they recruited him. They went after him, and uh, it was just something. It's great, it's great opportunity for him and his family. Something he couldn't turn down. How did the players react initially when they when they found out what was happening? Well, you know, it's always tough. You know, the transition's tough, and, and players are, you know, you know, they're, they're hurt a little bit. You know, you can imagine that, but they're very resilient. Uh, it's a great group of young men. We have great leadership. You know, they, they were fantastic yesterday in the practice and. Uh, we didn't practice today, but they, they're they moving on, and, and we're going to be fine, and uh, you know, I, I, th I think they understand what, what what happens in this situation, and that they're anxious to go play this game. They're anxious to go win this game, and I've had a bunch of kids come by yesterday and today, and uh, we're moving forward. You're listening to the San Jose State Coaches Show here on 1590 KLIV. Well, it's also nice to know they're in good hands with you being a veteran coach. You've been in this situation before, and the team right now, well, certainly on a high, here at ten and two, ranked twenty fourth in the country, getting set for the military bowl. Can you touch on call for a strength of this three? Can you call for a lot? Talking to Coach McIntyre throughout the season, he would always touch touch on uh, the camaraderie and the level of focus they have. These are guys that are friends on and off the field. You can tell they care about each other just being around them. Can you comment on, on this year's group of guys we're working with? Well, again, I mentioned earlier, it starts with the leadership. You know, the sixteen seniors we have have been tremendous. You know, some of them been here through five years, so they've been through a couple years with Coach Tommy and, and uh, you know, obviously three years with Mac, and then, you know, obviously the kids that we've recruited since Coach McIntyre's been here, um, uh, 
it's just a great group of young men, it really is. I know it's easy to say, but that's not always the case. They really like each other, they, they like practicing, they like hanging around each other, they're very competitive. Uh, so when you get it, you know, when you get that camaraderie with a team, and that's huge. You know, any good team foot any good football team has that uh, you know, you you got the make of a good team we do. So and you know, it's certainly tough uh, as a San Jose State fan to see Coach McIntyre go. He's done such a great job here, and he's such a great guy away from the game in addition to being such a fantastic coach. Tough to see him go, but we know he's taking advantage of an opportunity that he feels is better for him and for his family. But could you touch on the foundation he's laid here for San Jose State moving forward? When he got here, just one win in his first season, five wins last year, and on the on the edge there in terms of being bowl eligible. And then this year, all of a sudden, in the top 25, they're talking about San Jose State football all over the country. The team looking for its 11th win of the season, and this is one of the best teams in San Jose State history. Well, you know, when you first came in, uh, you know, Mac had a plan, and uh, he knew what he, how he wanted to execute that plan. It was the first time he's ever had coach. I think he was running things. It was a transition for him as well. It was a transition for the staff that he hired. But he stuck with that plan and, and we executed. I mean, that, that, that first season was tough. I mean, 1-11, uh, you know, that's hard to deal with uh, in, by anybody, you know, the coaches, the players, the fans. But, you know, when you look at that team, 1-11 team, uh, a lot of those freshman kids played that year. I think there were eight freshmen on defense that we played, and, and we knew, you look, you say, wow, in a, in a year or two, this is going to be a good football team. And they're still young. We still got a lot of younger kids playing uh, on both sides of the ball. So last year, you know, was a, a different year. I think the last two games of the season, beating Navy and then beating Fresno on the road, Fresno State on the road, was huge for this football team because it just vault us into the next season to into this season. You know, I, I, you know, people don't talk about this a lot, but we won 12 out of the last 14, and, and uh, you know, we're three points away from winning, you know, 13 out of the last 14, and, and so uh, I, I think those last two games were critical for us. Now, there was about three games during the middle of the season that we lost right at the end, I think all three in the last minute. So, you know, you, you know, you, you hate to say, speculate, say we could have won, I, I'm not sure. I mean, we had a chance to win three or four more, but we didn't. But I think we learned from it. We definitely learned from some of those losses. And when you come back and you win those last two football games, and then you just felt it after that, after that season that these guys were driven and uh, they, they knew they were going to be good. They knew we had a lot of work ahead of us. We had some holes to fill. You know, uh, you know when David Fells came in and then became our starting quarterback, one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Now that was great for, for us and him, uh, we, we really didn't quite know. I mean, I, I think the question going into the season was, you know, how good's a quarterback going to be? And obviously, he ended up being a great player and is a great player. So uh, we've stayed fairly healthy. We've lost a handful of guys, but uh, it's a magical year. And, and I think this team next year is going to be as good if not better. I mean, it's a tough schedule, but uh, a lot of guys coming back. All right, Coach, thanks so much. We're going to take a quick break. When we return, we'll talk to Coach Barry and get to know him a little bit more on and off the football field. You're listening to the San Jose State Coaches Show on 1590. <laughs> KLIV, Michael Spear with you alongside San Jose State interim head coach Kent Bayer. And Coach, time to get to know you a little bit more. And let's start away from football. How would you describe yourself away from the game? <laughs> What do you That's like a good to question. do? I'm not sure I don't have any time to do anything. So <laughs> I really don't. I mean, you know, I, I have three great sons, and one of them sitting here tonight. And, uh, you know, I love my family to death. My family's from Utah. My parents are still alive. Uh, you know, I have three grandchildren. You know, I enjoy time with family when I get it. But, uh, you know, I, I love to play golf. I don't have any time to play. But, um, you know, I, I enjoy the football part of it, obviously. It, you know, it's, it's a tough business and certainly a lot of time involved with it. But, uh, you know, probably just spending time with family and, and, and my sons and grandkids are the best that, you know, my parents, uh, they both live still live in Utah. So I, I think that's what I enjoy the most. Well, your fifth season here with San Jose State, your first two seasons served as the linebackers coach, then you were named the defensive coordinator in 2010, so you were here before Coach McIntyre. Coach Mack interviewed you when you got here. How was that whole process, and you know, what, what led, you, led you to staying put here at San Jose? Uh, you know, I was a little tired of moving. Um, <laughs> you know, I've been a lot of places, uh, you know, but 
when Mac came in, he wanted to interview the staff. He had some ideas who he wanted to hire, and I wasn't one of them. Uh, but I think when he came in and he went through everybody's resume and he looked at my background, and you know, I walked in his office, and the first thing he said was, wow, what are you doing here? I said, well, Mac, what do you mean? He said, well, I'm looking at your resume. Why are you here? I said, well, when I got let go of Washington, coach told me I hired I me, and one job I had, and uh, I've enjoyed it since. So, uh, you know, he said, I'd like to keep you. I'm not sure what capacity. And, and uh, so, you know, I said, well, I'm going to keep looking. And I you know, said, so I would love to be the defensive coordinator. And as things worked out, uh, I, I think he tried to hire one or two guys from back in somewhere, you know, his background. And, and they didn't want to come, and so it fell in my lap. Well, we've enjoyed having you in the defense, uh, doing a great job this season. We'll talk about a number of your players a little bit later in the show, but it's been a joy to watch the guys you're working with on the defensive side of the football. A number of playmakers. It's been been really exciting watching those guys. I know the, the last game of the year, maybe not something you, you totally enjoy with the shootout, but hey, San Jose State got it done. You had to give up a little points, but the funny thing is you, you kept them uh, well below their season average in Louisiana Tech, scoring, scoring so many points this season. Well, it's the first time in my life I was excited, and we only gave up 43 yeah, points. You know, exactly. I mean, you know he, they, they're a great offense. I mean, they're the number one offense in the country. They average 580 yards a game, 58 points a game, whatever it was. And we knew we had our hands full because they, they are great at what they do. Their quarterback is amazing. He hadn't thrown an interception up until the last two games of the season. I think he threw one or two against Utah State, and Benet had three. And so, yeah, that was critical in the turnovers in that game. And, uh, we, we knew we were going to score some points on offense because they were, you know, I've never heard of this. They were the number one offense in the country and the worst defense in the country. I've Basketball never, scores. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, you know the, the one game they always, you always look at and you say, wow, I mean, they lost to Texas A&M, I think it was 62 to 57. And we all know A&M beat Alabama. So uh, that's the one that really gets your attention. And then there's about three times they scored 70 points. And, so, you know, but it was a great game and, you know, it was really, you know, we made some adjustments at halftime and the second half was pretty good. I know you're certainly very close with Coach McIntyre. He means a ton to you. Who would you say your other mentors are here in this business? Well, I got a friend of mine right now sitting here, one of my mentors, Mike Denbrock. <laughs> well, Mike and I are great friends. Him and I work together at Notre Dame and he's currently in Notre Dame. So if anybody wants to know about the national championship, he's here to talk about it. Uh, he, we're going to have dinner tonight. But, you know, Mike's a great friend. He's a great coach. We 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 learned a lot from each other over the years. Joe, you know, Marty, two, your now ready. You know, Joe, Marty, a number of co Most of the time, the, the assistants that I've worked with, you know, Coach Willingham, I worked for him for what 14 years. But most of the time, the assistants I've worked with, I've enjoyed that as much as not more than anybody, anything you know, in my career because you learn from them. I mean, Mike was an offensive coach. I'm a defensive coach. We still learn from each other. Uh, I, w I worked with a number of good assistants on the defensive side of the ball, and, and for, to be very honest, this group that we have at San Jose State right now is as good a staff as I've, I've ever been with. Uh, you know, Jim Jeffco, uh, just a tremendous football coach. You know, we all know his background playing the league and number of Super Bowls he won. I mean, he has no ego, and the kids love him to death, and then Andy Larusa and, and uh, Charles Clark have done a tremendous job defensively. So. You know, it's just the people you're around, you enjoy, and you learn a lot from, from everybody. I really do. Listening to the San Jose State Coaches Show here on 1590 KLIV, Michael Spear with you alongside San Jose State interim head coach Kent Bayer. Coach, as you said, from Utah, from Logan, Utah, you played linebacker at Utah State where you set a school record for tackles. That held up for quite a while, too. I think it held up for about 10 years. They, your alma mater has also had a great year. 10-2 and two, WAC champions, currently ranked 22nd in the country. How excited are you to see them head to the Mountain West, take that next step with San Jose State come next season? Well, that's a great move for both of us. Uh, you know, Gary Anderson just called me a couple nights ago and we talked about it and they were getting ready to go to the to Boise, the bowl game. And I just told him I'm rooting for him. And him and I have been good friends. <laughs> That's the first time i talked to him since they beat us. But I said, I don't want to talk to you after that game for a while. <laughs> but uh, he really, you know, honestly, Gary wishes us the best. I got a text from him. But, after we beat BYU, that's a big game for Utah State, and obviously it was for us. And he was excited that we beat him, really excited. And then he was really excited about the La Tech because he knows how good they are. So I'm excited for Utah State. I, they have a great program now. He's Gary Anderson done a great job. They have tremendous facilities. I mean, they've done, he's done a tremendous job recruiting. So it's a good move for both of us. Well, Coach, looking at your resume, you've coached at your alma mater at Utah State, you've coached at Idaho, Cal, Arizona State, Stanford, Notre Dame, and Washington, and now, of course, here at San Jose State. 
you've had the opportunity to coach some great college players. And I'm going to list just a few of them. Deshaun Goldson, who's the safety for the 49ers. A lot of the Bay Area fans are certainly familiar with him. Justin Tuck, defensive end for the New York Giants. Justin Cole, a San Jose State, a former San Jose State player, linebacker with the St. Louis Rams. Uh, Tank Williams at Stanford. Uh, and I remember last year talking to you, I was asking you, hey, who maybe the hardest hitting guy you've coached? You said one of them. Garcia, yeah, I'm three. three you're already Garcia, I'm three. No question. Duke, Duke could. He's as good as any safety I've been around. And Tank was too. And we had some safeties in Notre Dame that were tremendous. You know, Corey Wire was one of my players at Stanford. I just talked to Corey last night. He played in the league for a long time, just retired. He's, I think he's doing the Pac 12 network now. And, uh, you know, the, the list goes on and on. You've been in the business as long as I have. It's a long list. <laughs> but you're able to keep in touch with a number of the guys? Yeah, oh, yeah. That, you know, that's one of the best parts about this business that, you know, you, make, you have relationships. And, you know, I'm proud of those relationships. And, and any time I hear from those players and guys you've coached, uh, you know, it, it, that's special to me. You know, it, it, that's what it's all about. How about Pat Tillman? I know you spent a little time with him, but uh, San Jose native, uh, when, when you were at Arizona State, got to know him a little bit. What can you tell us about Pat Tillman? Pat was one of the greatest people. Uh, he's probably we all will know. I mean, we, I was at Utah State. We recruited Pat. I was a part of that recruiting process. He came to Arizona State. His freshman year was my last year at Arizona State, or maybe his sophomore year, I can't quite remember. But I remember, one of the things I remember about Pat Kelman, and I, I think he, he um, <clears throat> his goal was to go to Stanford, but Stanford didn't recruit him. I think we may have been the only ones that recruited him, if I remember correctly. Uh, played here in the area. David, uh, party at two, your table's not ready. When he came to Arizona party State, two? I remember him the first day the freshman walked in, he walked to my office, he closed the door, he sat down, he sat right up in his chair, and he says, you're going to play me this year. I'm not going to redshirt. I'm playing coach. And you know how that goes. I mean, you're a freshman. You don't know that. Yeah. Well, he did, and he played great. And he says, I'm going to graduate in three and a half years because I've got other things I want to do with my life, and he did. So, tremendous person, and uh, what, what, what a great guy. Yeah, certainly. You're listening to the San Jose State Coaches Show here on KLIV. We're at Original Joe's in downtown San Jose at 301 South 1st Street. San Jose State plays Bowling Green in the upcoming Military Bowl presented by Northrop Grumman. Kickoff is set for 12 p.m. Pacific with the Spartan pregame show beginning at 11.30 a.m. Pacific. It's all right here on the Spartan Sports Network in 1590 KLIV. The game set for later this month, December 27th, so a Thursday game back on the East Coast in Washington, D.C. Well, Coach, uh, before we get out of this segment, uh, this is going to be your ninth bowl game as a coach. And uh, I know you have to look back to think of all these bowl games you've been involved with, but how rewarding is this upcoming game knowing where San Jose State was a few years ago to where they are now? Uh, you know, I, it's hard to describe because these guys have worked very hard to get themselves in bowl game and get themselves in this situation. And any time you come from a place that no one ever thought they could even begin to be, you know, no one ever dreamed that we would win 10 games. I think maybe you know, probably people say maybe the most would be eight. And we had a chance to win 11. Yeah. Uh, but when, when you look at it that way, and as special these guys are, it, it's as rewarding of a year, honestly, that I've ever had in coaching. Uh, it's got to be in the top five for sure. But uh, uh, because of these young men and the coaches, I mean, Coach Mack is a, a great friend. And, and tremendous job and all the rest of the coaches. So it's it's a it's a it's a uh, tribute to those guys, really. It's players that have done. And I know people close to the program, obviously yourself, knew you had the tools there to get things done. But has this success surprised you at all? Not really. Uh, no. Uh, you know, you, you play a tough schedule. Uh, you know, it, we knew how tough that was going to be. Anytime you play BYU and La Tech and Utah State and the rest of them, Navy, we all know how tough that is. Uh, it, it, but it didn't surprise me because uh, two years ago, uh, Coach Mack kept saying, and I, we, we were saying, look, we're taking our lumps right now, but look how young we are. This yeah. team could be a really, really special team in two years, and it's been that way. Well, the defense has been a joy to watch. 25th in the country in points against, and again, you've gone up against some teams that are going to score some points, and you've limited some teams. You mentioned maybe shut them out on the road and their rushing attack. Everyone knows about the option offense for maybe. <laughs> State, uh, just really impressive to do that 
back east. We're going there once again. But looking at that Navy game, could you just tell us that the preparation that went into it and, and just shutting down that option offense? Yeah. Well, we I get a lot of credit for that game, but I, I don't want to take a lot of credit. I mean, it, it was a lot of people. Coach Mack is very involved with what we do defensively. We I had a background of uh, defending Navy when I was at uh, Notre Dame. It's a yearly game for them. Um, and Coach Mack had a background because they played him yeah. in Duke. So we put our heads together. We put uh, a plan together. But people don't realize how much we worked on Navy. Last year, I think Navy was our 11th game. Going into last year, we worked two full days in spring ball just on Navy. Yeah. We worked uh, two days in, in fall camp just on Navy. And then we worked 15 minutes a week for 11 straight weeks on Navy before we went into that game. And we did the same thing this year. Now, Navy was our fourth or fifth game, but we spent two full days in spring ball. You know, we, we looked at last year's game. They they did some things against us, against us that we had to correct. We, we made those corrections. We made some adjustments. Uh, and then we, we executed those. We worked, in, you know, like I said, two days in spring and two full days in fall camp again. Again, and then again, 15 to 20 minutes every week before we played them. So, we, it was just one of those special days where everything worked, and that, that it's not always the case, but it did that day, and the players did it. I mean, you know, I just I have great kids, and you know, obviously those two linebackers, those two middle linebackers were great. And Vince, last year, told me after the game, he said, "Man, coach, that game was boring." I said, "Are you kidding me?" <laughs> as hard as they are to defend, that, you know, either, either as we all well know, you can be embarrassed by an offense like that, or you know, if you. If you understand what you're doing, you got a chance to beat them. But, uh, you know, it was just one of those days that we did everything right. Any chance Vince has to talked to you into maybe growing your hair out like he has yeah, there's no way. That, there's no way that's going to happen. He wanted some pictures of me when I was in high school. I wasn't going to show him. Oh, did you have a similar one? No, no, no. I didn't, no? Well, I didn't go that far. No. <laughs> well, it was certainly in the hair working for him, yeah. so we'll take it. Well, uh, before we wrap it up, wrap up this segment, I'm not calling you old, but I remember when we went to Navy, you've been around to a number of stadiums. That was your first time playing at that stadium. It was. Now we're going back east, nation's capital, just down the road from Annapolis at RFK, side of the military bowl. Is this your first time coaching at RFK? It is the first time, wow. yes. You know, we, when, we played, when I was in Notre Dame, we played Navy in Baltimore Raven Stadium. Yeah. I'm not, I don't know the name of the stadium because of 80 some thousand people, and we also played them in the Meadowlands. We didn't play them at Navy, the stadium not big enough. And obviously we played in Notre Dame. So first time I've ever been in RFK, and it's the first time I've ever been in Navy. Wow. Navy. Yeah. So two new stadiums for you this season. Well, we're going to take a quick break here and be back with San Jose State Assistant Athletics Director for Ticket Operations, Derek Coelho. This is the San Jose State Coaches Show on 1590 KLIV. And welcome back to Original Joe's in downtown San Jose. The 24th ranked 10 and 2 San Jose State Spartans take on the 8 and 4 Falcons of Bowling Green in the upcoming Military Bowl presented by Northrop Grumman. The game is set for Thursday, December 27th. The Spartan Free Game Show begins at 11:30 a.m. Pacific. Kickoff set for noon Pacific, and you can catch it all right here on 1590 KLIV. Right now, joining us on the program, San Jose State Assistant Athletics Director for Ticket Operations, Darren Coelho. You hear from him all season long in the pregame show with his thoughts outside the box segment. And here and now, we've got the date, we've got the time, we've got the location, we know where we're going finally. Next question, how do Spartan fans get tickets to the upcoming bowl game? Well, they need to call our office. I mean, that's the uh, that's certainly the best the best option. I mean, every sale that's, that's coordinated through our ticket office in athletics not only helps San Jose State financially, but also allows all of our fans to sit within the same contingent. Um, which is obviously what we want. Um, you know, we have a $60 ticket that's that's uh, for sale. It's a second level. Uh, RFK Stadium is a really interesting stadium. It's five levels, yet 46,000 seats. So the first level, literally 124 seats in size, I mean, not large in any capacity. So we're in the 200 levels, which are you know a little bit larger in size, but still, um, you know, you're talking about 11 to, you know. 25 to 30 rows still from the field. Um, Sightlines will be great for our folks, and obviously we sit uh, starting at midfield and we go outward. And um, you know, the key thing is buying from our office and, and making sure that you're supporting us. Uh, you know, as we take this this next step and and uh, you know make it the most fun as possible. You're going to want to sit with Spartan fans. Why would you want to sit with someone else? And the number to call 408-924-SJTX. Again, that's 408-924-SJ. TX Assistant Athletics Director Darren Coelho joining us on the program right now. You can also visit certainly SJSUSpartans.com. 
Uh, Darren, the, there's also some other things going on. There's, talk about the priority seating for this game. Well, you know, what we do is in, in, we take great pride in, in those that donate to the Spark Foundation and, and that are season ticket holders. Uh, we actually seat for bowl games like we would for any road game. Everybody is put in priority order based on their, their level status. Are you a season ticket holder? Um, you know, as secondary to the fact that, you know, are you a Spartan Foundation member and at what donation level? So out of fairness, we put everybody in priority in order and obviously give the best sight lines, rows, that sort of thing, um, you know, consideration for aisles, that sort of thing to those that donate at the highest level and then, and then we go down. Certainly we want to rally all Spartans to go to, you know, the Bowl Central link at sjsuspartans.com and buy and purchase that way. But, um, you know, out of fairness for the thing, that's, that's how you need to do it. And that's how most schools do it. And uh, as we advertise, we want to give people as much priority as possible in this thing. And, and that means that they're going to want to get their order in as soon as, as, soon as possible. I mean, we'll, we'll sell tickets all the way through the 18th, uh, primarily through our office. But um, ordering, you know, in the next day or so, we'll still give them that priority that I, that I mentioned. Now, how about the option of buying to donate? Can you touch on that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, that's a great one uh, for us. Obviously, not everybody's able to make the trip all the way out there. Uh, to the game, um, in our agreement for this, for the game, the military bowl is, is actually doing a lot of that charitable stuff on our behalf. Um, but certainly, anybody that wants to help San Jose State directly financially by purchasing a bowl ticket and having us offer that to you know a local serviceman or um, you know youth in the local community to that extent, we certainly would love to do that on your behalf. And we do have a number of people that have already chosen that option. So. Um, you know, obviously that's that's something we love. $60 is, is is a good price for a bowl game. Anybody who looks at what these other prices are should be more than comfortable with that. And uh, certainly, you know that you're getting uh, you're getting your own benefit from from that purchase as well as San Jose State reaping the benefit of being able to offer that ticket on your behalf. How about for students listening right now, students that are wanting to head back east to the nation's capital for the game, what are their options in terms of getting a hold of some tickets? Well, the university is fantastic when it comes to bowl games. I mean, the university basically will sponsor a ticket for a student. So um, we have had a number of students that, that come into our office. They need to show their tower card. Uh, we create accounts for them like we would for anybody else. And uh, basically, we allocate them a ticket for the game. Now, based on the number that, of students that do claim, we'll determine where we seat the students. Uh, I did mention those lower row seats. Those are where the band will go due to, due to their proximity and need to be close to the field. Um, but in that regard, we're going to piece the students as close to the band as possible, either right adjacent or in a, in a section uh, you know, near them. But it's a, great, it's a great thing. Students should come in and claim a ticket if they plan on attending. Once they create their account, they will show their tower card again at team, show their tower card again at team will call the day of the game to actually receive their admission uh, to get in. And, and uh, like in uh, Albuquerque, you know, six years ago, we had a number of students do that to uh, be a little bit longer of a road trip now. But we did have some students actually hit the road and, and make it to the game six years ago. Well, obviously, there's a ton to see in the nation's capital. Have you learned much about the bowl game events going on? It's, of course, during the holidays. What can the fans expect back in Washington, D.C. As, as we get set for this bowl game? Well, again, the, the best place to visit uh, to receive any information on the bowl game is our website, sjsuspartans.com. We have that Bowl Central link, like I mentioned. There are certainly team-only events that, uh, that the bowl invites specific to just the team and that core group. Uh, but there are some other public events that, that certainly... Uh, our fans can be a part of. The Alumni Association is putting together an event the Friday night before the game at the local establishment. And just like six years ago when we did that, um, the game obviously is, is you know really important in Texas and I was on the field and all that. But that celebration the night before the game, we really talked about everything else other than the game. So obviously that's going to be a fun event. The Alumni Association will sponsor a, uh, a pregame tailgate right there adjacent to RFK Stadium. Uh, that morning leading up to the 3 o'clock Eastern start. And uh, you can find out more information on that through our website or sjsualumni.com or 408-924-6515. You get right to the Alumni Association for their event. So there's a lot of events. There's also going to be plenty of one-off events, people in the hotel seeing each other, hanging out, um, local restaurants, you know, let's go there, let's go here, let's go there, that sort of thing. You bet. Well, it's something I enjoyed seeing when we went to Navy earlier in the season. A lot of San Jose State fans and alums in the house for that game back in Annapolis. 
So I assume you're expecting Spartan fans from all over the country here in Washington, D.C. You bet. Our orders have been from all over the place. And I think what's neat is, is the Heinz variety of folks that, that we've, we've experienced. I've had some of my friends that played fo football at San Jose State, Tony Cantero and Eric Coffrin, and some others that have bought tickets, you know, former players doing that, uh, Major General Tony Jackson. And, um, you know, also, you know, like you mentioned, a bunch of, we have such a neat core East Coast thumbprint now for playing Navy, you know, which will be three months, you know, two and a half months now, but three months by the time the, the game comes along, that we have a core group that obviously we focused on back then. And we had a very strong contingent at Navy. And uh, anybody who remembers the pregame alumni event, it was, it was outside of the alumni tent, people making their own picnics adjacent and stuff. So we anticipate uh, certainly a good, uh, a good show. Darren Coelho, Assistant Athletics Director for Ticket Operations, joining us right now on the San Jose State Coaches Show. Well, Darren, you're an alum. You're obviously a fan of San Jose State football. What has the ride been like for you, seeing San Jose State uh, now rise up to number 24 in the country, 10-2, and two, looking for its 11th win of the season? Well, this is as good as it gets. I mean, it's why we all do it. I mean, I talk to you know, many of our folks we know by name, and, and you know, internally our passion working in the department is very similar to theirs um, by coming to games and donating to the foundation and buying season tickets and all that. We share the same passion. I mean, it's all it's all for the same cause. We want the blue and gold to do as, as well as possible. And, and this is as fun as it's been. I mean, literally in the regular season to have our, our home record, our road record, I should say, mirror our home record. I mean, many of us know that that just doesn't happen. And the joy that we experienced in Fort Collins a year ago, snapping that nine game non-conference road losing streak um, I remember that last touchdown to, uh, to Jabari Carr standing next to Louis Wright, of all people. And it was so special. And uh, now, look, we won a bunch of road games this year. Non-conference, conference, it doesn't matter where we are. And uh, I think that's what's sort of neat about RFK. We're going to put our thumbprint in a stadium that, that uh, we haven't been in before. And uh, very similar to Qualcomm Stadium down in San Diego. You know, it's sort of the the baseball style yet NFL style seating and individual chairs and and um, you know sort of flat as you go up it's really going to be a cool thing. Well taking on Bowling Green in the upcoming Military Bowl closing in on that kickoff Spartans in the top 25 we're getting the national TV exposure next year a move to the Mountain West which is going to be great for San Jose State a great time to get involved with San Jose State Athletics how about the importance of fans buying tickets and season ticket plans moving forward because in just a few weeks when San Jose State finishes the season 11 and 2 they're going to start saying hey we're looking ready we're looking forward and ready for 2013 well there's no question I mean in, in a lot of our wheels are in motion uh, in regards to that you know we've already changed there's plans to change our manifest for next year and and uh, we're looking at this equal number of home games as, as road games, just like this year. And um, you know, it's really going to be uh, a great season. We actually are taking deposits for next year already. New uh, new folks can come in and place a deposit toward uh, their reserve plan if they want to do that next year. We also have an eighty-nine dollar general admission season ticket that's on sale now that people have been purchasing. And again, what what it's done for some of these folks is it's given them that priority within the bowl. We'll put them at the back end of the season ticket holders uh, in Spartan Foundation members, but it's a nice thing now that people are, are able to engage in 2013 while we're still playing in 2012. All right, Darren, well, we appreciate it. Appreciate all your hard work. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you in Washington, D.C. here pretty soon. You bet, Michael. Thank you. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Be back with Coach Bear right here on the San Jose State Coaches Show. <laughs> KLIV, Michael Spiro, Kent Bayer with you. On Wednesday, December 26th from 8 to 9 p.m., you can catch the 2012 San Jose State Football Bowl Preview Show right here on KLIV. And then on Thursday, December 27th at noon Pacific, the 24th ranked Spartans take on the Falcons of Bowling Green in the Military Bowl presented by Northrop Grumman. The Spartan pregame show starts at 11.30 a.m. Pacific, and you can hear it all right here on 1590 KLIV. Well, Coach, looking at this upcoming game, we've got the number 24 San Jose State Spartans, 10-2 and two on the season, finished 4-1 and one in conference play, taking on a Bowling Green team that's 8-4 and four on the season, 6-2 and two in conference play. And a lot of fans wondering, hey, where is Bowling Green? We've heard about the MAC, we've heard about Bowling Green, we don't know where it is. Bowling Green is in Bowling Green, Ohio, two hours west of Cleveland. So 
that answers the question of where Bowling Green is. And out of the MAC Conference, the Mid-American Conference uh, coach this season has been really doing well. A number of teams succeeding this season. Bowling Green finished second in the East Division right behind Kent State. They had a great year in the MAC. As I said, overall a great year. Number 15, Northern Illinois, playing number 12, Florida State in the upcoming Orange Bowl. So this Bowling Green team has seen a number of other good teams on the season. Their big win, uh, looking at their schedule this season, was a 26-14 road victory over Ohio, a team that finished 8-4 on the season. They also share a common opponent with you. Their first uh, win of the season was actually a 21-13 home victory over WAC member Idaho, so they share that game with you. The Falcons, ninth in the nation, giving up just 16 points per game. So like San Jose State, they bring in a, a defense that's been uh, making some noise this season. They're led by fourth-year head coach Dave Clawson. Uh, do you know much uh, about their coach? you, you had any time to talk to him at all over the years? No, I, I don't know Dave. Uh, you know, I, I know his background a little bit, but I've never met Dave. And, uh, but they're a very well-coached football team. And the uh, coach... Looking at their defense versus your defense, a lot of people getting excited for the game, just looking forward to that defensive matchup. Uh, looking at two guys, your guy, WAC Defensive Player of the Year, defensive end Travis Johnson, then they've got the MAC Defensive Player of the Year in defensive tackle Chris Jones. He's got 19 tackles for loss, third in the nation with 12 and a half sacks. Uh, have you been able to watch uh, him much on tape? Yeah, I just watched about an hour today in the defense. You know, we've been watching their offense uh, for a couple of weeks now, but I had a chance to watch them a little bit today. They're a very good defensive team. Uh, very similar to what some of the things we do. Uh, uh, very well coached. Fundamentally, uh, they play hard. Uh, they, you know, the one game that sticks out and it gets your attention is the Florida game at Florida. Yeah. I mean, I think that was a 10-point game. I don't have the score in front of me, but it was close. Yeah. They had a chance, actually. They had a chance to win that game at Florida. And we all, I mean, that's a tough place to play. So that's the one that gets your attention. And then you mentioned the other one, the one against Ohio. Ohio has been one of the dominant teams that week now for years. And uh, I think Ohio dropped the last three or four games of the season, but they, they were on a roll there for a while. And they beat Ohio at Ohio. So uh, that's a big win for them. For them. And, uh, and, People take notice. You're listening to the San Jose State Coaches Show right here on 1590 KLIV. Well, Coach, tell us a little bit about this offense your defense is going to be going up against on the 27th. Looking at their their leader, the guy behind center, veteran quarterback Matt Schillitz, uh, what stands out to you when you look at him on film? Well, you know, he, he knows that offense very well. The, the, they use four or five different personnel groups, a lot of misdirection stuff in the running game. That's the first thing you notice when you watch them. A uh, little unique in the running game, with especially the 11 personnel sets and, and some of the 12 personnel sets. So, you know, it, it creates not, not confusion, but you, you, you better be sound on what you're doing because if you fit in the wrong gap, uh, the ball could be gone. But, you know, the quarterback is a big, tall kid. I think he's 6'3 and a half. And, uh, He's a little bit of a gunslinger. I mean, he's going to sidearm it. He's going to come over the top. I've seen an underhand a couple things. I mean, he finds a way to get the football to the receivers. And uh, it looks like the, the kids play. I mean, it looks like their team plays hard around him. And he's definitely the leader on their offense. The backs are good. I think they had a back that was, I don't, I don't know names. I know numbers. Number six had about 950 yards for the season. They had another back that's, uh, that had about around 550. So. Good running, they're a good running football team. And the receivers are big. That one kid's a freshman and he's number 81. He's 6'4 and a half. And two freshmen and good good player. He reminds me of those kids from BYU that we played this year. Yeah, the running back, speaking of the running game, Anton Samuel has rushed for 966 yards on the season, 10 rushing touchdowns. He's averaging over five yards per carry. So when you're working with your guys in preparation, what are the keys in terms of slowing that unit down in this upcoming bowl game? Well, you know, we got to make them one dimensional. You know, the first thing we said when we played La Tech as good as they throw the football. If we allow them to run the football, we're going to have our hands full. And we feel the same way against this group. They cannot run the football. So we got we got to make them one dimensional. Uh, that's the first thing that we talk about. And the other thing that, that, that stands out when I watch them, they don't turn the ball over much. And we've been great at turnovers. We work on all the time. We preach it. They've only fumbled the ball eight times and lost four. So it's something we got to talk about. And I, you know, Turnovers are key. You know, we can't turn the ball over offensively, and we got to get some turnovers to give us a chance because they have some normal interceptions either. So, uh, but that, that those are the two things that stand out. Well, uh, one of your key guys, one of your leaders up front, will be senior defensive end Travis Johnson. In addition to being recognized as the WAC Defensive Player of the Year, he was named a second team uh, Capital One Academic All-American for the first time in 30 years. A Spartan football player now receiving that award. 
uh, the WAC and San Jose State career leader in sacks, and I know as Coach McIntyre joked, he will always be the WAC leader in, in, in career sacks. He's sitting at 31, hoping to get a few more in the upcoming military bowl. Such a force up front for you as a coach. Uh, how fun has it been for you coaching him the last few years? Well, yeah, I've been here since he's been here, and uh, you know he uh, I, he can't. I, I know this is all you know. People say this about a lot of their players, but honestly, he's as good a young man as I've ever been around. Uh, he is a not only a phenomenal football player, but he is a great person. You know, he comes from a great family. Uh, he's, he's very well respected. You know, I feel bad for the guy because he's really played on a bad knee for the last four games, and if that hadn't happened, he'd have probably had ten more sacks. But uh, thankfully, he got that record in that last game. And uh, but uh, he, you know, I think he's a little more healthy, but uh, he's as good as I've been. Some of your other leaders on the defensive side of the ball, defensive tackle Travis Rossini. Linebackers, you mentioned them a little bit earlier in the show, Vince Buhaj or Keith Smith, but a guy I've watched and I enjoyed watching mature is your defensive back, Benet Ben Wicker. He tied that school record for picks in a game with three interceptions against Louisiana Tech in the regular season finale. Man, him, him in the secondary, he has been a force and really fun to watch for us. Well, he's very athletic and he's got great ball skills. and uh, You know, he, he's a guy that uh, he really understands our defense and uh, he'll, he'll take some chances once in a while. And... Uh, Fortunately, most of the time we take those chances, it works out. But, uh, you know, he's such a, you know, he, he can play in a position in the secondary. He plays either corner spot, either safety spot, and he plays our nickel, and he plays our boundary corner, he's better field corner. So he's got a lot of talent and, and ability. And, uh, you know, and he didn't play all year. I mean, we, we didn't even start him in two or three games. But, uh, you know, with another full year on his belt, who knows what he can do. Well, this military bowl game, about a month after the regular season finale against Louisiana Tech back in, in the end of November. What has the postseason preparation been like for you guys in terms of structure and how you've been scheduling practices now with now so much time in between games? Well, you know, immediately after a lot of tech, we gave him a week off. I mean, you got to get away, step away a little bit, a lot of time involved, and so we gave him a week off and we went out recruiting. Uh, and then we've been in out recruiting quite a bit as it is, but We've had some light workouts in the mornings uh, for about 45 minutes to an hour. A little bit of individual, some passing, you know, some skeleton work, uh, a little bit of team, and then we send them in and we, well, we do some running and conditioning. So they, I think they've stayed in really good shape. Uh, we, we're now in finals. Finals started today and they go through next Tuesday. Nothing on the weekend, but we're actually, our first big practice will be tomorrow uh, in shells. It's the first time we've really concentrated on, on Bowling Green. We're going to scrimmage some of our younger players at the end of the practice to develop them. Our, uh, we're going to go full pads on Friday. We're going to give them Saturday off because of finals. We're going to do something light on Sunday, probably a little film work and maybe a light practice. Uh, nothing on Monday, a little bit on Tuesday. Uh, actually, a, a fairly heavy practice on Tuesday. Uh, and then, uh, actually, excuse me, we'll do Monday, nothing on Tuesday because there's a lot of kids that have finals. And then we'll go very hard after that on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday, and then we leave on Sunday, and then we'll have two more full practices. How valuable, I know the focus right now, all on Bowling Green, all on the military bowl, but when everything's settled, San Jose State ends the season 11-2, and two, and hopefully we you know, we bump up there in the poll, currently ranked 24th, we're certainly happy to be there, but we'd like to be uh, ranked even higher when this is all said and done. But then when we look forward, how beneficial is all of this extra practice time, basically this extra month, because then we move into fall practice come 2013? Well, that's always the benefit of the bowl game, especially with, with the younger you know, players. You get a chance to, it's almost another spring practice for them, and everybody looks at them. So you, you, you basically get another 15 to 20 practices with these young kids, and then, you know, you have two or three months off, and then you come back spring ball, so that it really gives them a jump start into that, and that's the benefit of going to bowl game, along with the notoriety and, and you know, where we end up in the polls and you know hopefully we win that football game but that for whoever the next head coach is I think it's going to help them. Well coach you know it was t tough to see coach McIntyre leave but certainly happy for him he's got a very bright future ahead of him and for San Jose State fans and for me we're, we're excited to have you as the interim head coach leading us in the upcoming bowl game and we know we're in good hands team's looking great throughout the season. It's been a joy watching this team go from where it was just a few years ago to where it is now. We know they've got that great level of focus we've been talking about throughout the season, and they're excited and ready, ready to go in this upcoming bowl game. And thank you for your time. It's been fun having you on the program. All the best in the military bowl against uh, Bowling Green, and go get them out there. Thank you. Yeah.